Hello, I wanted to take the time now to talk to you about Master Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma is a figure that is credited with bringing the Zen tradition to China. He's a semi-legendary figure. They say things like he invented Kung Fu and he invented tea and things like that. And so he's a semi-legendary figure because of these fantastical things he's supposed to have done. And so we need to keep that in mind as we go over his story. But And I'm going to only touch on one part of his story. And that is the story of his students. Okay, so we're going to talk about Bodhidharma and his students. So, when this fellow Bodhidharma came to China, he sort of traveled around. He really wanted to spread the meditation school of Buddhism into China. He really wanted to do that. His, I think his teacher had recommended it, and he really wanted to go by his teacher's wishes. So he really wanted to spread the meditation school, what we call Zen today. And he went around China, and he saw that people had started doing really weird things with Buddhism there, and he saw that a lot of the monks he met, uh, he thought they were lazy, he saw they didn't really meditate, and he thought that was real weird. So... He thought, well, these students are never going to get it. Um, it reminds me of on the day of the Buddha's enlightenment, it said that at first he thought, I can't, this is too fantastic. I can't share this with anyone. But then later he decided he would try. Bodhidharma, in the same way, he said, well, maybe these people are not ready for this practice. So he went and he lived in a cave. And he went and he sat in a cave by himself meditating full time. He did the practice called wall gazing, which is just meditating facing a wall, which is the practice I do too. I, I, I like to meditate facing a wall. Um, I know a lot of people like to have closed eyes or have open eyes and look at the floor or whatever. I like to meditate facing a wall. But anyway, so he was just living in this cave, staring at the wall, just thinking, well, maybe someday these people will be ready for the teachings. Okay. And some years, it said some years passed, who knows, but this scholar named Huike, Huike, it's a hard name to say, Huike wanted to study Buddhism and somehow he heard about this legendary teacher who had come who decided no one was ready for the Dharma who went to live in a cave. There's a lot of stories in Chinese Buddhism about this, about going and finding the wise hermit who's in the wilderness or in a cave or whatever, right? And going through arduous journeys. And that's even, gosh, that's even true in Japanese Buddhism, right? That's Dogen's story too. He went to on a dangerous journey to China to find the real teachings and then bring them back home. It's, it's the same kind of idea. It's a big idea in Asian Buddhism, in East Asian Buddhism is you're going to go on the journey to the far away, to the hard to get to, to the teacher who's a hermit or whatever. So... Huike has decided he wants to see this master. People talk about him because he just lives in a cave, right? So Huike goes to this cave, and sure enough, he finds the master Bodhidharma there. And just a second, I'm going to tell you what Bodhidharma looks like because that's relevant to the story. Um, he is a large man with a giant beard and scary eyes, okay? He's always depicted, he looks mad or he's got creepy eyes or whatever. He looks does not look like an inviting person. That's very important to the story. And uh, maybe that's kind of part of the reason why that uh, people weren't into his teachings too. He was kind of scary looking, but also in a way that, in a way that uh, begs respect, in a way that makes it seem like he knows what he's talking about because he looks fierce. So um, anyway, so Huike, this little, is a little dude and he goes into this cave and sees this big creepy looking master and he says, I, I want to study with you. I want to learn, I want to learn from you. Will, you. will you teach me? Will you make me your student? And he says this, I mean, he can see. He sees Bodhidharma meditating. He sees him meditate for a long time, and he knows this guy's got something, right? This guy's got something. I want something. So he asks to be his student. And Bodhidharma says, no. There are different stories about reasons he gives to Wike, but it, it doesn't matter. The point is that he thinks that Wike is probably not serious. 
probably isn't ready and maybe to a certain extent he wants to make it hard he wants Hui Kei to prove that he deserves the teachings so he just says no and Hui Kei he doesn't give up he doesn't leave he stays there he tries to sit with Bodhidharma he kind of asks him again and again and he's just ignored and this is the part of the story that I really think is not true so keep that in mind Hui Kei we are told to prove himself to Bodhidharma, he pulls out a sword and he cuts off his own arm. He cuts off his own arm and then he holds up his arm as an offering just to prove that he's really serious about the Dharma. So why do I think that story is mythical? Well, he probably would have died, right? But the point is that he's willing to sacrifice, and he shows this to Bodhidharma. And Bodhidharma says, okay, you can be my student. And Huike says, oh, thank you so much, Matt. Well, I guess he doesn't do this, does he? But he says, oh, thank you so much, Master. My mind is very anxious. Will you pacify it for me? My mind is very anxious. Will you pacify it for me? So he's expressing that life is a struggle, right? He wants Bodhidharma to save him. To pacify his mind. And Bodhidharma, he pauses for a moment. And he says, bring me your mind and I will pacify it for you. Bring me your mind and I will pacify it for you. And Hui Kei really struggles with this. Because he thinks, well, where's... I can't just bring my mind. Where is my mind? Where's my mind? And he really starts reflecting on his mind. Where is the mind? Where's the mind located? How do we bring it? Can we show it? No, we can't. Right? So that great question, Bodhidharma put a great question on him, which was, where's your mind? And Hui Kei did not have an answer. So Huike says, well, I don't, I don't know where my mind is. I can't bring it. I can't bring my mind to you. And Bodhidharma says, I have pacified your mind. I have pacified your mind. So Huike ends up becoming a Zen master. He is the second patriarch after Bodhidharma. And this story is very important because... It sort of tells us, like, these big, heavy questions. Who am I? Where is myself? What is myself? What parts, what is not myself? I don't know. That's what we call the don't know mind. I don't know where my mind is. I don't know what myself is. And we can spend a lot of time trying to figure that out but the truth is that Hui Kei's mind was already pacified and Bodhidharma just had to tell him that when you realize that yourself is not something you can find that you can't bring forth your mind because your mind's here who knows right it's already pacified pacified your mind, right? So, Huike brought this great question, and Bodhidharma just, he smashed it. He just said, there's, there's nothing for me to do for you. Um, uh, many years later, uh, a Zen master I admire very much, named Ikkyu, um, had the famous quote, relatively famous quote, don't wait for the man in the snow to cut off his arm. Help him now. Don't wait for the man in the snow to cut off his arm. Help him now. And I think he was saying, sometimes teachers are trying to be like Bodhidharma and trying to make it really hard. And they're forgetting that this story is semi-mythical, right? And this is about helping people, too. And there are all sorts of ways we can help people. 
but we don't need to cut off our arms and we don't need to ask our students to cut off their arms and so I really like that quote by AQ even though he he did something nobody does right he questioned Bodhidharma but I really like that because we get too attached to these stories sometimes and we think oh he made his student cut off his arm that doesn't mean we can't help people now so um, that's my talk about Bodhidharma and Huike. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for being here.